I want to talk about Conor McGregor. Yeah, man. I was about to say. Yeah, we talk about Conor McGregor. So I, I am so happy about this whole thing. People are looking at it through the wrong lens, I would say. Right? So a lot of people are like, I can't wait to see what he should. Here's the deal. Conor McGregor wasn't fighting. He had no real reason to. He seemed to be only, only the perfect fight with the perfect situation. And even then, he was going to do like six years of contract negotiation and, and other associated bullshit. Well... Now he's getting sued by everybody. Conor McGregor is going to be the Conor McGregor of old. Broke McGregor is the best Conor McGregor. Oh, yeah. You don't think Jesse is fucking suing him? You have Seal sue him? He's got lawsuits coming from every corner now. You All right, let me lay out what happened. So uh, I think a lot of people might not know. Conor McGregor is and me in names but conor mcgregor is close with another ufc fighter this ufc fighter is like artem lobov or something close to that yeah well um artem lobov said that khabib Nur nurmanenov khabib whatever nurmi they call him sometimes um you know. Yeah, they do. No nurmi's <laughs> they catching call him on nurmi? yeah i've never heard nurmi but oh okay. i've heard it from i i pretty in touch with all this shit. Anyway, uh, because his last name is so difficult, they, I know it happened to uh, Joanna Champion too. They just rename him. Anyway, uh, Khabib, he, uh, Artem Lobov talked shit about Khabib. He said that Russians, he's Russian too, uh, they don't like him. They say that he's a pussy. He keeps pulling out of fights and he doesn't have the fan base in Russia that he claims to have. Well, Khabib catches him in a hotel and just kind of like big brother bullies him a little bit. You slapped know, him in the face. He slapped him in the face. And then he did another thing, which actually would have bothered me more than the slap. We kind of held him by the back of the neck and talked, talked him down yeah. and uh, and really kind of like big brothered him. Now, mind you, Khabib would almost certainly win a fight between those two. But Khabib also had like 10, 12 goons with him. So, you know, they really like it. There was nothing that Artem could have done to defend himself in that situation. He was just surrounded by Khabib's whole, uh, Khabib's whole entourage. Anyway, McGregor sees this happen to his buddy Artem and goes flipping ballistic. Ballistic. It starts off with uh, McGregor has a, uh, like a, a journalistic crew. I don't know what to call them. Called the Mac Life. And they kind of make like daily vlogs or whatever of Conor McGregor's life. Yeah, well, they sec. had journalism credentials at this event so they could cover it and go like in the back rooms and stuff and mm -hmm. they open the back door and let conor mcgregor and his posse into the building well now mcgregor and his posse work their way to the buses that the ufc fighters are leaving the event on and he goes bonkers he's picking up like park benches and like dividers and it's hard to even see what some of these trash things can were. trash can i i think i saw like you know the thing that like a velvet rope would be hung from yeah uh, yeah he yeah. like th threw one of those he just had a satchel full of full monsters <laughs> just, I, I have a velvet <laughs> monster rope story. I, I have a story about the velvet rope holder after this please continue okay so um and by the way I've only seen like two or three videos of this, but apparently there are dozens of videos of this. That there is like hotel surveillance of the Mac Life team letting Connor in the building and his posse. Uh, all the fighters had their phones out as he's going ballistic. All these fans, like it's a really well documented thing. And Connor wasn't just like in the back pointing at henchmen. Connor is leading the charge leading the charge he is the guy with the trash can in his hands the guy doing this stuff he might like be the worst behaved of all these people oh so, bar none yeah so if, if you're under the impression like i was before i saw it that maybe connor was just there no connor is extremely guilty perhaps the most guilty the ringleader of this thing and uh he's screaming at khabib to get off the bus that's his primary goal he's screaming at the bus with Khabib on it saying, come on out here, come on out here, etc." Connor wants to fight Khabib right then, right there. And mind you, Khabib's in the process of cutting weight right now. Uh, he would, I, I think Khabib can beat Connor, but he can't beat him on that day. Right? How much does Khabib weigh? They fight at 155, but he's known for having a harder time cutting weight than most yeah, people. Yeah, he's walking around at like 175 at least. And, oh, okay. and like, like at his heaviest, like, like when he's maybe three or four months off a fight, he balloons up to 200. Like, like, like if he's, when he's just like 
putting on muscle and training and stuff. Like he's a big boy. Yeah, he, he used. I think he might not balloon that much anymore. But anyway, the point is, he's likely he's a big, strong guy, and uh, Connor wants to fight him at kind of his weak point while he's cutting weight, and he's going nuts over it in an effort to defend. Or, I'm sorry, defend his friend Artem Lobov. So uh, now a lot of people are like, Connor's done. I think Connor's the opposite of done. I think Connor was done when he got rich off the Mayweather fight. Now he's back. Now Connor needs a fight again. And by the way, a lot of people are like, this is going to, they're going to, they're jumping off the Connor hype train, right? Dana White was saying that some cop was like, you know what? I used to be a fan of his too. I didn't realize he was like that. Dude, this is the biggest fight hype ever. If Khabib wins and he's heavily favored, then the Connor Khabib fight is a true raging grudge match. Yeah. In a way, like this is the, I, I was going to call it a brilliant fight promotion. I don't think it, it, brilliant would imply that he's playing 40 chess on this thing. I think it's actually an honest to goodness, raging, perhaps drug fueled, crazy, not really, <laughs> that everyone's calling it a cocaine rage. And I don't know that cocaine makes you rage. I don't know if that's a thing. Like for all I know, like it's a pot rage. Yeah. That, I think that's... we're reading way too much into it. Like, like his friend was, I, I, I don't think that he was, it was calculated that, that mm -hmm. like, oh, he's at his weak point right now. Today's the way to start. Like it happened last night with the thing where like, he's going after Artem. So like immediately he responds to that. And like, all I see him doing here is throwing what looks like a dolly or something like a dolly. Uh, at the window of the bus. I don't think he's going to lose any significant amount of money because of this. I don't think he's going to lose a single sponsorship. His sponsorships are like Budweiser and Beats by Dre. Is like, Chessie out of the fight? This fight Chessie fueled it? by Budweiser. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you might not know this. When he... Jesse has lacerations on his face, multiple lacerations on his face. He's in the hospital right now getting dealt with for these facial scars, and he's supposed to fight in three days. Right. Really? Conor, yeah. Conor McGregor fucked up a fighter by getting shattered glass. And, and you can hear in, in the videos, Jesse is like, how bad are these cuts? How bad are these cuts? Because he has to fight. Now, I don't know how bad they are. Like, I didn't. All I hear is the audio of him. And I know that he went to the hospital to get it dealt with. I don't know how bad the cuts are, but you better believe like knocking a guy like Jesse off one of these Super Bowl cards is lawsuit worthy. It yeah. totally is. I don't think. Perhaps, but I don't think they will sue him. I don't think the UFC are going to sue him. I think I mean, that maybe UFC, this, maybe not. I think this improves, uh, and, and you know, I don't think the hotel will either because they don't really. I mean, he'll have to pay for the damages that that he did, which like the pennies out of his pocket. Uh, and, but but otherwise, I, he made money today with this rampage. Like like this this was. I mean, the one Twitter video that I clicked had like eighty or ninety thousand views on it. I bet this there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands total viewership on what he did today. It, almost as many people watched to watched his his rampage today as will watch the PP, the pay per view card in a couple of nights, right? Like so, like. Oh, more... So Jesse is out of the it's Brent is fresh off the presses here. He's out of the hospital and he's planning on fighting Saturday. Good. So I I I would love to see pictures of his face. That's what yeah, I. Yeah. Do we want to watch any of the videos of him spazzing out? Yeah, if we scroll up to Chiz's Forbes link, I think he has like several of them. Well, I scroll up too far, and there's all kind of nudity from our from last show. Man, we had a good show last last week. <laughs> which uh, Chiz? Which one of the videos on the Forbes page is the best one? This is what I like about Conor McGregor. This is where you see that like like he's he, I like that he's a passionate guy like this. Like this is the kind of stuff. This isn't what like a celebrity does. This is what like a real like street tough kind of guy that you kind of want your fighter to be does. This is what like a, a fucking thug does. It's like, Oh really? You, you, you might expect this from like the Diaz brothers. Yeah. Like if you saw the Diaz brothers out there going Mario and Luigi they on some motherfuckers in a parking shit. lot, yeah. like they not like this Khabib too. They'll throw some Coke cans or something, but they ain't never thrown a dolly. <laughs> the only difference is he was in the bus. The, the, the Nate Diaz went up to Khabib and tried to start a fight. And I think there was some amount of pushing and wrestling in the stands of another event. Like, like it was a UFC event. They're in the crowd with all these civilians. And Nate Diaz is trying to start a genuine fight right there. Like that, that's, awesome. what, that's what he does. Um, Love it. I, yeah, I'm not sure... There's two lenses to view a few. And one is the one Kyle just pointed out, which is like, this guy's a real fighter. He's from the streets of Ireland, whatever that is. And, and you know, he, that's, that's what you'd expect from him. Another is, this is a guy who's not ready to be famous. 
You know, some guys, you take them and you put them in the limelight and all of a sudden bad behavior, nothing applies to me. The rules are, are not mine. Like, remember when he went in the Bellator cage? So what happened was I think his fighter won, I think. And uh, he wanted to celebrate with his friend. Now, you're not allowed to go in the cage. There, there's a group of people and there's an athletic commission and you submit to them ahead of time who's allowed to go in the cage. Well, Connor just goes in anyway. He climbs over the cage and he wants to celebrate with his guy. The ref doesn't allow this. He pushes the ref. And this is, in, in almost any sport, like a capital sin. You know, you're not allowed to put hands on the ref. Connor pushes the guy. And it, it's just like one more symptom in what's looking like a, a disease that Connor has and that he's not ready to be this famous. You know, he, he's, he's out of control. And, and when, you know, ready when, or not, here he is, though. It, yeah. It, it's, it's, there's no, there's no, there's no, it doesn't matter. That's, I, I, I love this guy. I love this drama that he's created. I, I, I've always liked sort of the WWE merging a little bit, like a little bit of that WWE flavor mixed in with, with mixed martial arts. This reminds me so much of the scripted events that they'll often have in WWE where they're backstage in a very similar like parking, indoor parking facility type thing as this. And like one fighter will go after another. Like, like I want to say, I don't remember. It was, I think it was the Big Show. Like, like the Big Show's dad died, right? In real life, his father passed away, and and like one of the other wrestlers, they had this skit where he's he 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 beats the Big Show up and like is dragging his father's casket behind his car down the street. Like, I love when they turn it into like a legit grudge match like this. Like, like what we've got happening Saturday night between Max Holloway and Habib. They're shaking hands. They're cutting weight together. They have the same fucking nutritionist. All right, mm -hmm. that doesn't inspire me. Now I want to see the fight. I want to see the fight. These are Let's two watch guys the bottom who are video together. I'm queued up at one second, so I don't get the, the TMZ insane anymore. alternate angle uh, yes. from TMZ. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm I, at zero. All the time I see this, the lighting is terrible, and this one looks better. So, three. Which which one are you are you uh, clicking on? The top one. Insane the TMZ. alternate angle of Conor McGregor busted attack. Okay. It's on YouTube. Oh, let me. Let me. He sent oh, the YouTube one. Oh. I was, I was still looking. Okay, yep, I'm good. Ready, set, play. So the fighters are on that bus. Yeah. It's a nice bus. A nice bus. And it, just a lot of yelling until Connor. Oh, get me a dolly. It is a dolly. That's what it is. That might have been what hurt Chessie. It's definitely what hurt Chess did. A bit of dolly. Yeah. Now the bus slowly starts reversing. <laughs> I mean, if anything, like that bus should have had better windows. What if a crazed fan was coming at you with a I mean that's with a like dolly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what if some what if an angry group of movers? That's spark plugs, you know. <laughs> Dude. Mac Gregor. Oh, Khabib wants to fight him. Of course, but it, the, I'm just—I see another video. Khabib Nurma Gamenov, Nurma Gamenov, uh, wants to torture Connor. <laughs> Man, that's good shit. There's a fat guy in Connor's group doing a lot of moving around back and forth, but not really contributing to the damage. <laughs> he's wiggling. He's wiggling with anger. He's a decoy. Look at that. They're just, oh, that he, threw another, too? he broke another window out. See, that could have been the one that hurt Khabib. I don't know. Ah, that one was up high. I think the that first, first one, one looked was like the one most was... likely to cause some damage because the I window agree. completely shatters and, and goes the dolly in. enters it, yeah. Yeah, uh, but right there he threw like a folding chair like straight at the front of the bus but it's a it's a weird shaped like group oh, kind of actually, bus and there's glass up there i've seen the break from the front of the bus and it's it's like you hit you know the front windshields how they kind of they get those rosette damages but they don't nothing goes through them really. yeah yeah this is fucking great this is See, fucking I'm, great dude I, you guys know i am not that into into ufc but as the person who watches like one event two events a year this makes me want to watch it more if connor comes around yeah because yeah, he's, he's oh, yeah. lost like, he, this, this is pretty insane, right? Like to throw dollies and chairs at a moving vehicle. 
It's interesting like it's, how it's attached a felony. Connor is to his teammates. Like, you know, everyone has teammates in this sport, but most of them aren't attacking buses over training. Well, that's like his training partner, like best friend. I, I may be wrong, but I think when he jumps in the Bellator cage, that may have been Lobov. That might have been Artem that he was congratulating. Like, like I always see those guys training together, and, and like, they're very close, you know? I, I, that's, his, that's his buddy. And, uh, and to have, like, your, your, your enemy in Habib, like, 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 sort of, like, manhandle him like that. I, I saw that video, and I was thinking, like, it's, I, I didn't like that. I, I didn't like that. He's kind of, like, bullying this grown man in, oh. a, in a hotel. Yeah. It, I, so, again, it's that question of are you allowed to win, right? Artem started it. Artem went, he did an interview. I saw the interview that he gave. And he's like, the Russians don't like this guy. He's a pussy. He keeps pulling out of fights, right? He used the word pussy. I'm not, I'm, this is not hyperbolic on my behalf. So yeah. Habib gets to manhandle this guy and say, you think I'm a pussy? Say it to my face. Tell me I'm a pussy right now. And it's like, well, you know, like you, you said it. Uh, now Habib had his whole goon squad behind him, which makes it a little yeah. unfair. But uh that kind of drives the pussy point home a bit, right? Okay. I see now that I'm here from. with 20 people behind me and you're alone, say it to my face. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not saying it to your face. I'm saying it to your face and 20 people who aren't afraid to take a felony for you because you'll take care of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I know you're not going to beat me up right now, Khabib. <laughs> so, like, uh... Yeah, that's a strong point with the other 20 people. But it, there, there is a... Before I thought it from that angle, it was like, yeah, you know, like it... You know, he's a fighter. He's, he's got to answer for the things that he says, I suppose. But fighters talk shit, right? That's promo. I, I see that. Well, they're not like, fighting like, each I... other. He's just talking his shit about a fellow co-worker. But, but uh, that, that's true. They're not scheduled to fight each other. But all the time you see, like, fighters talk shit about other. Like, I watched a Habib interview the other day where they mentioned everyone else in the lightweight division. He's like, what about this guy? Ugh, small heart. He has no heart. No, no. Uh, weak legs. He is broken. They, they don't he even is... fight in the same weight class. Oh, fair enough. All right. Well, yeah, you know, to, he's talking shit, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I talk shit about plenty of UFC fighters. I'm not in their weight class. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I hope they don't corner me in a hotel room at any point because I will <laughs> I will also bitch out. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, bitch. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe I go for the eye poke. Maybe I go for that Kill Bill move where you reach in and pluck an eyeball out. Oh, I'm sure that will work. Yeah. That works in real life, right? Uh, yeah. You know, my, my feeling is that if I break rules that UFC fighters usually follow, they won't even be good at breaking them back. Right? I, I don't know. You pluck an eyeball out. There aren't too many men who are going to like keep going. If I, you pluck I, an I, eyeball they're, out. They're I, have oh, a I feeling pluck it right out, Woody. I initiate the eyeball pluck. It doesn't work out. And they say, oh, well, I do eyeball pluck stronger and more accurately than you do. Ah, uh, no, you know, you know I'm gonna do. Kyle, nails. you need to, yeah, trim nails. You need to get like a a Wings manicure with... where you get those oh. big fake plastic nails put on, and then you oh you'll pluck that eye right out. Oh, you're right, the the big curved ones, so that I can mm -hmm. get in and scoop that eyeball out. Like uh the the kind of nails that like a lot of uh workers at the DMV seem to have. Yes, and TSA agents. Yes, yeah. that's what yeah. you want to get patted down by. I yes. feel like spiders are crawling on you. My, yeah. my favorite line <laughs> from this drama is Artem Lobov is the only thing Conor McGregor has ever defended. Huh? Huh? Is it for people who don't get that? He's a champion with two different belts. He's never defended any of them. He just bitches out. If I was a, a really famous UFC star and they were just going to let me hold on to it and not have to do anything, I think at some point I'd just be like, I'm just going to hold on to these until they like come to me and say, hey, you know, that, you know, statute of limitations or whatever the fuck you would call it. You know, it's it's coming off in December or something. And then you would schedule a fight. But, like, it, isn't the point the to hold on to the yeah. – is the more impressive thing how many people you fight to defend your belt or how long you hold it? Pro probably the number of people you fight to defend it, right? The more – no, no. The most impressive thing is how much fucking money you make. And I feel oh, like that's, that's Conor McGregor's name. Conor McGregor's like, yeah, I could have gone out and I could have fought this guy or that guy. And made a little bit of money. But the longer I stay out, the, the more my legend grows. The more news articles are written about, I'm not going to defend it. And in fact, them taking his belt away and him coming back for it, is it, he'll just make more money. He's just holding out for the most money possible. That's the thing. He's such a home run hitter that, like, it used to be, you know, if he got a $50,000 bonus, it was a really big deal. And then he starts making over a million dollars a fight. And then he starts making, like, 
five or 15 million a fight. Then he fights Mayweather and makes a hundred million, they're saying. I don't know. So now, like, fighting frequently, like, a 15 million doesn't do much for him now that he's had a hundred million dollar fight. He needs another hundred million dollar fight, and he may have just created it. I, I've been leading the fuck Connor, he's a retired fighter train. Now, I, this, there's one fight I want to see Connor fight. And it's against Khabib. Khabib. I want. I want fucking Khabib to lose. Uh, I want K- Khabib to lose. Uh, like my dream come true is Khabib to lose. Uh, Connor to come back to Max Holloway. To Max Holloway. Okay. Take his belts and then be like, "Fuck you, Khabib," and fucking walk out. Like, like this. Fuck you. I, I just don't. Don't give him what he wants. I would like that so much. I would like. Him, I would love him to win both of his belts back in some sort of weird. I don't even know how you schedule him to take. To fight for two belts with the same guy. You want him to you fight know. Max twice. I want him to fight Max twice. I, I, I like that I'm, idea I'm, last, I'm week, uh, last week. I'm so All right, so is so, Max Holloway the guy who is good enough that he can contend with McGregor on both of his, like 145 yes. and 155? So Max Holloway is the 145 pound champion right now. He is stepping up to fight for the 155 pound championship Saturday night. A couple things to consider is Connor currently has at his house. The belts for 145 and 155. He has won both of those championships uh, before, and 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 he hasn't defended them, but he has won them. And he has also defeated Max Holloway before, but that was a number of that maybe three years ago, four years ago. It was a fight that Woody and I actually attended in person. Good fight. Uh, Max Holloway since then has improved greatly and is on like I don't know a 12, 12 fight, win, fight streak. win streak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 12 fight win streak. He is. Really worked on his game. He is an excellent striker. He 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 strikes well moving backwards, which is similar to what McGregor does. He is much more like visceral and brutal with what I, I love that fight. I don't remember who he's fighting with, where like in the closing seconds he was like, let's stand right here, not take a step back and just fucking fucking bang. And like him and the other guy just stand there toe to toe, wailing on each other through for the last like 20 seconds of the fight or something like that. It's great. He's a very good pl- good fighter. Do you think that's going to happen? Did you have You're... a thing happen, Woody? You look very confused. I heard sounds outside. Oh. But... You want to go check to see if they're invaders? You've got your own Rufus of sorts. Rufus! <laughs> 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 that might just be crazy. It might have been wind on the trash cans. I don't know. I have to mute myself three times a show for police cars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I do think that this is going to cause problems for Connor. You know, as much as we love it as fans, I think there will be commissions and such that that don't like it as much. Dana is very upset with Connor. He's mad, etc. But Dana in the past has proven that he's more than capable of overlooking personal distaste with fighters if there's money to be made. And yeah. there's money to be made in this Connor could be. Do you fight. think he's genuinely upset with Connor yeah, or do you I think, think so. he's playing the part of like I have to be upset because I can't be this guy of oh you know what an awesome you know exciting thing well, like, I, I to, for this to happen like, he kind of has upset. to come out. I, so UFC 223 I've called it you know one of the, the Super Bowls a bunch of times and Connor's putting the thing in jeopardy you know one of the fighters is in the hospital with facial lacerations mm. another That's one uh, Thug Rose is very upset she's kind of known for being like uh, easily rattled and she was rattled, you know, by this whole like riot thing outside of her bus. So she's she's dealing with that on the eve of her, or nearly the eve of her championship fight, uh, where she's going to try and defend her belt. And Connor just put a really big event at risk and fucked with it. And I think Dana's mad at him. But fast forward six months, and Dana might be like, "This is the most brilliant promotion we've ever had." Accidentally brilliant. I think Connor's yeah. actually just raging and out of control. But well, if he's mad enough at this guy to throw dollies through his his window, then that's an event that I would end up like being more interested in. Like I'm yeah. someone who is would not buy a UFC event, but that's one where I might be like, oh, yeah, talk to some friends. Let's all go in and, and buy an event together. Like this might be interesting. It's going to be ruthless. Yeah. You know, who knows? Maybe there's like water bottle spraying or like, <laughs> uh, you know, spitting. Dude. Or something, you know, uh, the, the Kyle eye poke. I, I love that It'll Connor is mad enough to throw dollies through the guy's bus. Khabib is already saying, I want to torture him. 